All right, you guys, this is Ross, and today we're gonna to look at another fruit tree, another fruit that I really like to grow. It's one of my favorites. And some of you guys might be thinking, what is this tree that Ross is showing us? But if I move some of these branches away, you can get a good idea of what the fruit looks like down there. And even over here, there's quite a few fruits, and they've got some pretty good size on them this year on this particular tree. Some of you guys might be thinking, that these look like apples, actually. They could look like an agramunt russet, I believe is the variety name. But this is actually an Asian pear. And they're beautiful. They're pretty much pest free. It's the best part about them. The biggest issue I have with these Asian pear trees, guys, is, is fire blight. And in this planting right here, we have not just the Asian pear. This is a variety that we're looking at today. It's called Shijoro. We also have a number of different European pears, and the European pear is the fruit that we're most used to seeing. For a lot of us that don't really know much about fruit just yet, this particular pear is what we typically see at the grocery store. And of course, there's many varieties, many different types of this particular pear. We've got a pretty good fruit set on these this year. This variety I'm looking at is called Harrow Sweet. And I've picked them actually, um, one of these fruits, to actually let it ripen on the counter, soften on the counter. We'll get to find out if indeed they're ripe. They're difficult to know when they are ripe, but across the board with all of these pears and even the apples, most fruits, is that when they come right off the tree, very easily, with very uh, little resistance, they're ripe. And this Asian pear here today that I've harvested when you lift the fruits and you lift them horizontally and they come right off the vine or right off the tree very easily, that's when you know. The color can also really help is that I've noticed they really like to turn orange. Uh, when you grow them at home, you won't find this typically at the store or most places that you can get them from because they're picking them a little too early, unfortunately. This is also, I think, the color of the blush is a more orange color that they get when you have enough sunlight that hits the fruit. But typically, you'll start to see a lot less of that green, a lot less of that brown color, um, and more of the orange color. And that's a good, I think, a good way to determine when they are ripe. I guess the other way you could probably tell is if you cut this open, you look at the seeds, the seeds should probably be, be black or brown. If the seeds are lighter in color, like in some of the apple varieties, uh, it's not good. And you probably picked it a little too soon. And that's the beauty, guys, of growing fruit at home. Even though I would argue that there's no reason, I think, to buy these, these pears at the store. They're so easy to grow, assuming you have no fire blight. I mean, you get pretty much perfect pears every time. Um, as long as that fire blight's under control or you have uh, varieties that are resistant, you're good to go. And as a result, you just get these beautiful, awesome pears that are picked to perfection or close to perfection. And you get a very good product that's better than the store. It's free. I mean, these things, one of these things, I'm not kidding, one of these pears, I've seen them at the store for like $3 a piece. So why spend $3 a piece when you could spend about $25, $35 on a tree, put it in the ground in about three to five to seven years, you're gonna have more pears than you probably know what to do with. Um, so I think it's amazing. I think um, this fruit's wonderful. And uh, for many reasons, as we've tasted a lot of fruits this year, it's such a successful year, you know, pretty much everything fruited. I mean, I harvested it. I was like, at certain times in June, I've been harvesting like 10 different fruits, 10 different berries, handfuls of berries, handfuls of this, handfuls of that just a deer going around my backyard, grazing on the fruits like a deer. Um, you know, and then all the stone fruits have fruited, the apricots, the plums, the cherries, the pluots, the plums, I said plums twice. Um, you know, the apples are even, some, some of the apple trees are fruiting, the grapevines are fruiting, different types of grapes, the muscadine, um, the gummies fruiting, you know, or did fruit, the figs are fruiting, even some pomegranates this year are gonna fruit. The persimmons have, have fruit on them. So I've been trying a lot of fruits, guys, this year, and uh, not that I haven't had experience with them prior, but I have to say this is just, in general, one of my favorite fruits. I think it's severely underrated. I talked about this in 
one of the videos we did in the spring, we talked about some of the fruit trees I think you guys should grow and plant. We talked about varieties very specifically, and um, this is up there, one of my favorites. So it's crunchy like an apple. It's not necessarily as soft as you might think, like a European pear. Uh, it's usually quite um, crunchy. Uh, the texture, I think, is perfect. I love the crunchy fruits um, that aren't too difficult to eat. It has a great, great texture to it. It's nice and um, moist and watery. Let's bite into this now. Oh yeah. Oh man. And I'll tell you guys this. All these fruits that I've tried over the years, they all have like different sugar. Different um, types of sugar that people have used in different types of candy or different products and they've extracted the, the types of sugar and the flavors from these things that are created in nature and they've made them into an artificial flavor. The type of sugar in this particular pear is very interesting. It's kind of like, um, almost like a cross between cotton candy and bubble gum. So when I'm biting into this, I'm, I feel like I'm eating a pear that's crunchy, very moist, but it also has such an amazing bricks, an amazing sugar content that I personally find is uh, highly desirable. Again, it tastes almost like something like bubble gum or cotton candy, like a cross between the two. It's amazing. And you won't find this, again, you will not find this unless you pick them right off the tree, basically perfectly, as I said. You lift them from the vine, and if they come off with very little resistance, I keep saying vine, <laughs> they're trees, guys. So this fruit right here, even though it may look right, and you can see how orange this particular fruit is, it's got really nice blush to it. But if I lift this, it's just not coming off. It's just not. If I lift it like that, it should come right off and that's when it's perfectly ripe. And it's pretty much the same thing with all these fruits on the tree here. This one was just the first of its kind and if I lift these other ones up, they're just not ripe. So you can, you can hopefully get an understanding of what it is that you're looking for when you're picking these fruits. The uh, European pear is a little different, a little bit more tricky, but the same principles apply. If you can lift it right off the, off the tree, that's kind of what you're looking for. Um, so that's a little piece of advice. And actually, I think this one just came off. Nope. Nope, it's not ready yet. So there it is, guys. That's kind of this fruit. I've been trying to uh, open up the center of these trees. I know they like to grow as a pyramid. So if you think about a pyramid shape, a triangle shape, that's kind of what they like to do. So they have you know, wider bottoms and more narrow tops. What I've been trying to do is keep that pyramid shape. You don't want to deviate from that too much, but you do want to open up the trees a little bit and give them more light. So I've been staking a lot of these branches here. Got a bunch of stakes to really make sure that the trees are opening up a little bit, getting a bit more of that light. And it's really helped the fruit set. It's really helped the size, the color of these fruits this year. And uh, of course, they're getting more mature this way. I've done a number of summer pruning on these. I really should come in and do a little bit more on some of these shoots. But you kind of want to slow down a bit because if you do some summer pruning, I think a bit too late, I've noticed, you may end up actually cutting off the flowers for next year. So you got to be careful with that is that a lot of these pears will fruit on the tips. And if you're cutting off the tips late in the summer, I think you might be Missed it out on some fruit next year. So be a little careful with that. Um, I think you could probably prune them into September, at least in this area. But I personally, I think I'm going to just let them go and let them do their thing and let them fruit next year um, once again. A couple of these trees in here didn't fruit, and I have a feeling they didn't even flower. And I have a feeling is because I did too much pruning uh, last year in the summer. So I'm just being a little careful. I know the trees are young and uh, it's, it's a good idea, guys, to really give them a lot of compost, a lot of organic material, build up that mulch, plant them in um, in a spot that hopefully gets some pretty decent light, 
this spot here gets actually not a ton of light, although this is the sun's kind of shining in through a big shade tree right now. These trees really only get about five or six hours of direct light and they still produce really well. So personally, this is a great tree I think you can put in a very shady spot. And I even have some way back in the corner over there uh, that's a standard size pear that uh, will actually produce pretty quality fruits even in a lower amount of light. But the more light you can give them, the better. But I think the most thing that you're really concerned with is that fire blight, getting yourself a resistant variety. And then of course, just like with the rest of these trees, working on the soil, putting down all this mulch and all this material to have that break down in the compost, feed the organic, feed the soil, feed the microbes in the soil, all the bugs, all these different things make these trees a lot happier and healthier and then they perform a lot better. I mean, it's just as simple as that. Feed the soil, trees eat trees, right? All right, guys, we'll see you soon. I really love this fruit. I hope you guys will grow it. It's kind of why I'm making this video to promote it a little bit. We'll see you soon. Take care.